Hello everyone. For the past eight years, I have managed distributed teams of over 100 freelancers located in over 30 different countries. My name is Jason Martin, and I am a managing partner of the software development company AppEvolve and a partner of GigOS Consultants. Managing a completely distributed team for my software development company has given me motivation to make this type of team structure work as well, if not better than teams that work under one roof. While there are challenges to this model, there are also unique opportunities for improvement and growth. I appreciate the opportunity given by Upwork that allows me to share my experience and guidance and hopefully to help other freelancers and agency owners build or take part in a successful team culture with a distributed team. The remote workforce is growing as more and more top talent is switching to freelancing and using platforms such as Upwork to harness their skills or grow their agencies. This grand remote work experiment of 2020 has taught us all a lot. There's simply no better time than now to reshape your business processes and culture to this new opportunity. But only if you do it right, and that means providing the appropriate resources for distributed workers, as well as changing company culture from top to bottom. By now, millions of companies around the world have instituted work from home policies and augmenting their staff with freelancers. But what impact does working remotely have on company culture? Today, I will cover the current trends of distributed teams, challenges that agencies face, and essential tips to overcome those challenges no matter where in the world your team members are located. These tips are designed to help freelancers and employees who are currently part of distributed teams, those new to building distributed teams, and those who are working to improve the culture of an existing distributed team. Before I jump into the main discussion points, I want to talk about rethinking the word remote and how this term is used. The word remote implies that you're away from something or distant. However, with being on a team with others who are also working from home, the term distributed is better fitting in my opinion. You're not away or distant from your team. You're part of this revolution in the global job market where working from home is just how work is done. So throughout this talk, when I reference the word distributed, I'm also using it as a replacement for the word remote. The stigma that used to be associated with working from home has evaporated in recent years and especially accelerated in 2020. The traditional business model once suggested that in order for employees to be productive, they needed to be in-house. Research from multiple data sources has since challenged this perspective and instead concluded that people working from home are actually more likely to be productive and happy compared to those working in office. Moving forward, many experts would agree that the distributed team model is here to stay. According to the annual Future Workplace Report that Upwork releases, studies show that by 2028, 73% of all departments will have remote workers. This is an important statistic that shows where we are heading. And to put it in perspective, this statistic was released before the COVID pandemic in 2020. In shifting away from traditional office space, there are some potential challenges that need to be considered. Awareness of these challenges allows managers to target each potential problem clearly and strategically. The first topic I'm gonna to highlight is isolation. Feeling isolated from the team is one of the most common challenges to overcome when members are working from different locations. Having an in-house team with siloed departments still allows people from different teams to interact with each other, but with distributed teams, this element gets stripped away. The next challenge is communication. With a distributed team, you can't gather in a room, so you have to communicate more intentionally and thoughtfully. And it's hard work. If an organized communication routine isn't in place, it makes it easy for your people to feel siloed on certain projects or tasks. Having a communication schedule that involves the entire distributed team, as well as opportunities for individual communication, helps motivate team members and makes them feel like they are part of the bigger picture. Next is setting boundaries. If you don't try to understand the personal working boundaries of your team members, it can make them feel uncomfortable and also stifle your workplace atmosphere. Companies should be mindful of how they program work. This includes a model for scheduling calls, sending messages, and setting video call expectations. And the last challenge I'm going to cover is trust. There are still a lot of managers who feel they need to monitor their team closely with tracking software. Not only has this proven to be invasive, but academic research shows that it may also be counterproductive, echoing what remote work advocates say is common sense. Tracking employees through their computers, especially in an indiscriminate way, risks creating new distractions, sinking employee morale, and increasing turnover. Through a strong team culture based on collaboration, trust, and communication, 
you can enact company policies that foster a productive workplace without falling into these common pitfalls of distributed work. Team culture isn't just about free food and video game competitions. It takes more to encourage a connection between a company and their team members and to rethink how your team works together. Culture is important because it impacts how your team and customers perceive you. And this greatly determines how successful your business will be. With the COVID-19 pandemic shifting much of the world to working from home overnight, having a process in place to build a distributed team culture is more relevant than ever. Let's start off with talking about one of the most important key elements of building a team culture, which is communication. There are typically several areas within the business where you can improve communication and platforms that will help you do so. Today, Slack is the gold standard for distributed team communication, and rightfully so. It's a great communication organization tool that has many advanced functionalities, such as building automated workflows and creating groups that can help structure a communication schedule for your team. For example, we have a channel for all of our team members who are looking for advice and feedback on specific problems. That way our team members never feel alone when working out a problem. It also ensures that any challenges can be discussed internally before our members feel they need to go out and find the answer elsewhere. It could also be fun to have informal channels for discussions about specific interest. For example, during our team meetings, we learned a lot of people were into gaming. So we created a channel specifically for this hobby. Having these informal team channels can help with keeping the team engaged and help keep business communication free of off-topic banter, while still allowing for side conversations that build trust and centered around shared hobbies or interests. Regardless of what communication platform you're using, one thing to consider is the clarity of communication. Don't forget that sarcasm, emojis, or vague remarks can easily be misinterpreted when they're not accompanied by body language and facial expressions that we rely on in person. It's helpful to include policies for the team that reminds them, for example, that emojis don't count as primary forms of communication when responding to others who are giving task instructions and discussing issues. But when it comes to using emojis to express emotions, that's perfectly acceptable. Sometimes at the end of messages I write to the team, I'll request that the team give the message a thumbs up so I know everyone read it. There are two types of group meetings that are essential for nurturing this team culture. This includes the occasional mandatory meeting with video on and also optional informal group meetings. I found that having a minimum of two mandatory annual team meetings is a good balance. One we do using Zoom and for the other we get together in person. Or if that's not an option, having two virtual meetings is great. It's a special feeling when you see the team members coming together who have bonded over projects or interests. For example, in 2019, we had a team meetup in Nepal, which included fun team building activities like taking a small plane around Mount Everest and cooking classes. My favorite part of in-person meetings is visiting new places in the world and sharing that experience with the team. The more you communicate with the team, the better the ideas you'll have when planning. Team meetings that are not in person can be equally as fun and creative. Just to paint a picture of a recent team meeting we had, I sent out branded packages to all team members around the world that included swag, snacks, and a cocktail mixer. We had music playing in the background, gave a toast, and everyone went round robin on the mic to talk about things we didn't know about them. We used this opportunity to squeeze in some of the company's accomplishments and get realigned with our vision, but overall we saw it as more of a virtual team building exercise. A lot of the team members found common ground and different types of interests. We also decided it would be fun to have a collaborative Spotify playlist for work and future virtual meetings. Just another small thing that can have a big impact on engagement. One-on-one -on -one communication is less intuitive in a distributed environment, so it can be easier to abandon. Individual conversations between team members should be just as structured as team meetings with a regular cadence and an agenda that extends beyond professional matters. Regular one-on-ones between employees of all levels has a crucial impact to strengthen relationships, and they also provide opportunities for team members to express personal praise or concerns that may not be appropriate in a group setting. We structure our one-on-ones in two different ways. First, we have a general check-in every three months. These calls are informal, and we use them to talk about things going on in life outside of work. The purpose of these meetings is to stay in touch with our team members and offer a general reminder that we care about them and are grateful to have them as part of our team. The other one-on-one -on -one meeting we have is an annual performance review. This is where we ask for feedback and suggestions about how we're doing as a company and try to find little nuggets of improvement. 
We also talk about the performance of the team member and look for areas of improvement there too. Another way to foster team engagement through communication is recognition. Public recognition of a job well done is one of the most effective ways to motivate a distributed team. This empowers team members and is a simple, effective reminder that they are being noticed for the great work they do. When someone is praised in a team chat, this small recognition gives other team members the opportunity to offer their congrats in forms of replies and emojis. If managers or executives also happen to be in that chat, this can be a powerful motivator, ensuring that credit is given where it's due. Every opportunity you have to foster interaction is a step toward a stronger team culture. We also announce birthdays, new team members, and honorable mentions to those who have hit a milestone on the team as a way to maintain that community vibe with minimal effort. Over the years, we've found that emphasizing open feedback to the team members is a reminder that they are contributing to the company in a way that extends beyond their personal needs or interests. In all our team and one-on-one -on -one meetings, we always close with a reminder that encourages everyone to have open communication and that the door is open. This could be anything related to other team members, clients, company policies, everything. We've discovered that some of the best ideas that have helped us grow as a company stems from the feedback of our team members. While we encourage interaction and communication, personal boundaries apply just as they do in person. Being respectful of others is something most people don't have to think about when face-to-face -face with someone. It just comes naturally. However, in a virtual setting, it takes a lot more mindfulness. Because Slack produces that always-on expectation, a lot of people feel they need to reply quickly to their managers no matter what time of day it is. It could even cause some unease if a team member sees a message on the weekend from work. It's very easy to send a message to someone, even in the evening or weekend, if it's on your mind and you don't want to forget. This is where scheduling messages comes in handy. In Slack, you can download tools to schedule messages in advance. That way, if you have a thought on a Friday evening, you can queue it up for Monday morning. When we first onboard a new team member, we like to understand how their day flows and learn more about their boundaries. For example, some people need time to prepare for meetings in advance and don't like back-to-back -back calls. Others don't like turning on their video during client calls or get anxiety in meetings with multiple people. 30 to 40% of people are introverts, so it's good practice to treat everyone as if they could potentially be uncomfortable in a large group setting. A sign of a good manager is someone who can tap into and unlock a person's potential by not putting people in uncomfortable situations. Having a company model for how you schedule your calls and meetings is essential for having a distributed team. It's important to encourage a healthy work-life balance with your team to help avoid burnout. A topic I get asked about a lot is whether companies should use monitoring software on their team members. If monitoring software is counterproductive, then managers need to consider other ways to ensure clear goals and accountability measures. I'm not a big fan of the traditional nine to five, fit all your work into this window model. I prefer to measure productivity by goals. Some people have different windows of time where they have an increased level of productivity. Of course, this doesn't apply to every single job or career, but it does in my world of software development as well as many other fields. Consider how you can switch from forcing your team to work under high pressure to creating an atmosphere in which the culture, coupled with checks for productivity, are used to ensure that time is well spent. For the last part of this presentation, I want to wrap it up with company values and setting that foundation and vision. It's okay for your company vision to see growth, but it's important for a distributed team to be aligned with that vision at all times. When a company lives up to its core values, its culture will transform team members into advocates for your agency and give them the drive to keep showing up. So let's do a brief recap of what's been covered. Make an effort to have at least two company meetings a year that mixes in fun and the opportunity to align with the company vision. Have one-on-one -on -one meetings with your team to give them the opportunity to express their thoughts. If you have a larger team of employees, organize a structure where your managers do this for the people they oversee. Give recognition to those who deserve the credit in front of other team members. Set a meeting and call structure to ensure you're not putting your team members in uncomfortable situations. Don't use surveillance software on your team. Build a company culture based on trust. My experience has shown that strong distributed team culture is possible, and it doesn't require a major organizational transformation. By integrating these best practices that I talked about today, distributed teams will be well positioned to address the unique challenges of building team culture, whether their members are spread across town or across all corners of the globe. Thank you.